With most bikes these days being air sprung, so using an air spring in the fork and an air spring in the rear shock, you're gonna need a shock pump like this in order to make the adjustments. If you do actually have a coil sprung bike, the setup itself is the same, but rather than pumping air into the fork or shock to adjust the spring, you'll actually need to physically remove the spring and swap it for a different weighted one. It's a really good idea to actually get loaded up and wear all the cycling kit you'd normally wear out on the trail, just so we can get an accurate reading as to how much weight we're going to be putting onto the suspension for setting it up. I'm going to start setting up the rear shock. What I've done is just made sure the O-ring is pushed up to the base of the shaft there. Then I'm going to just remove the valve cap and put it somewhere safe out of the way. Right, next thing to do, we want to roughly gauge how much air is in the system now. So what I'm going to do is just jump on the bike, rest up against there, uh, and weight the rear end. Okay, as you can see here, we've got far too much sag. On a bike like this, you're looking at running between 20 and 30%. Uh, obviously, it depends on travel and um, how you prefer your suspension to feel. I'm going to look to set this up around 25%. So what I'm going to do is shift this back up and now I'm going to attach the shock pump to the valve. Okay, so I'm just going to take note using the gauge on the shock pump just to see how much air we've currently got in there. So it's saying 50 PSI. As it was all the way down here, roughly sort of 80%, I'm going to put in a generous sort of 30 and then going to test the bike again and see how it is. Right, and try again, gently onto the bike all your weight down onto the rear, hold yourself up, get comfortable, get quite central and slip back off. Right, so we're bang on now, got just about the right amount of sag. Obviously you can fine tune it by attaching the shock pump and there is normally a bleed valve on here that will let you do fine adjustments. If you wanted to let a little out, simply just press the bleed valve I just let that down to 100, so I'm just going to pump it back up. I was at 140, so. With that done, I'm just going to get the valve cap and put it back on. We've had to actually put a cable tie on here just to give us an indication of um, how much sag we're getting on the fork. Unlike the, the rear shock we've got on here today, um, there is no gauge at all. So a lot of this is going to be sort of guesswork and looking to see sort of where the cable tie gets moved to once we've loaded the bike up. Once our sag is set, we will actually clip the cable tie and remove it completely because leaving it on there, you can get loads of grit and grime caught in there, which will then scratch the surface of your stanchions, which obviously isn't great and can damage your seals. Okay, so we're gonna try it on 50, but obviously, as you can see, we've added a little too much air there. Um, you can simply bleed the air off using the little button on the shock pump. They normally have them. And it's simply just squeeze that in and carefully watch the gauge as the needle goes down. Okay, so we're on 50 now. So I'm gonna remove the pump and check out how much sag we got. As you can see, adding the air has really helped. We're up to about 50 PSI now. We've got roughly, I reckon that's about 20 to 25% of sag, so we should be good to go. Obviously, when you get back out on the trail, you may find that you need to add or remove a bit more air just to get the feel right, but only time will tell on that, and, and it is, like we said, uh, partly down to rider preference. So I'm just gonna put the valve cap back on. And now knowing we're roughly about right with the sag, I'm gonna remove the cable tie and get out riding just to see where we're at with all the settings and if we need to add any more air to it.